Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is an update on my breast lift surgery. Um, this will probably be one of the last two or three videos um, in this series and then I'll be taking my channel into a different direction. Um, so please stay with me on that. It'll still be about self-improvement, um, like beauty, health, fitness, finance, all things self-improvement. So stay tuned. I remember I was telling you guys about some of the problems that I was having in my last video, specifically the areola part <laughs> of my breast was getting raised. Um, it was hypertrophic scarring and I was able to get um, a Kinelog injection for that. Um, I ended up getting another Kinelog injection a couple of weeks ago and now that lifted part is completely flat so that does work just an fyi if you want to find out more about what kinelog is then you can go to my last video and check that out so during that kinelog injection that i received i was expressing my concerns to dr richards about the darkness of my scar um i don't know if you guys remember but i mentioned that right below my areola the scar was pretty dark um and it was kind of coming outside of the boundaries of the original incision. So I expressed my concern to him and he explained to me that sometimes if you have a larger areola going into the surgery, that it can kind of get trapped under the wound and that's what it looks like to him. If you would like to minimize the appearance of your scars, there are laser therapy options, um, injections, bleaching creams, all at your own risk. I would do all my research first before trying any of these things if I were you. Um, and then there's scar revision. Then there's this really cool thing called skin camouflage. And that is basically medical tattooing which will match your scar with your skin color or close to it. Um, and I was very interested in that, um, but Dr. Richards was providing this scar excision complimentary because he wants all of his patients to be 100% happy with their results. So I did opt to go with the scar revision surgery. It's an outpatient surgery, which means you can drive yourself there, you can drive yourself back, um, and that you'll be awake during the procedure because um, a local anesthesia, I believe. Let me clarify that before I say that. But yes, that type of anesthesia is provided where you are awake during the procedure. So a little bit about scar excision. It's, I know you're probably thinking like, why would you replace a scar with another scar? <laughs> That's exactly what my husband said. But I'll share a little bit about what a scar excision is right now. A scar revision is a procedure that's done to alter the appearance of the scar. So the revision improves the cosmetic appearance of the scar by attempting to minimize it so that it is less conspicuous and it blends in more with the surrounding skin tone and texture than it did before. It also attempts to restore function and correct any skin changes caused by injury, wound, poor healing, or a previous surgery. So I go in for the procedure and it's very similar to when I had the breast lift except I'm in like a smaller exam room this time. I'm not in like a special surgery room or anything like that. And um, I sit on the bed, he marks me up and then he lays me down for the numbing injections. Now, this part was pretty painful, I'm not gonna lie. He walked by with a pretty long needle and I was just like oh shit <laughs> but I have a pretty high pain tolerance but I'm not gonna lie this was medium pain it, it was painful so he poked me in the breast area and was just kind of like poking all around sorry someone's calling so he poked me in the breast area and was just kind of like poking all around. It kind of reminded me of when you get a tooth pulled or something like that when they inject you with the numbing and they kind of like wiggle it around so that it really gets to your nerves. Um, that's what he was doing but inside of 
my precious soft breast so of course it hurt even more than that so just all around the breast just injecting 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 and you're not alone it's just it's him and a nurse which is why i said it kind of reminds me of being at the dentist when you have the dentist on one side and um you know the dental assistant sucking out the spit in your mouth but anyway i digress you'll have the doctor there and then the nurse there to kind of like pat the blood up and assist with whatever he needs assisting with luckily the numbing injection was the worst part because it's just like mm, 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 mm. it felt like mm, that's just the, <laughs> that's the best i can describe it. it just was like one of those pains where you're like ooh, 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 but you can't move you cannot move so of course he goes over to the next breast and i'm anticipating the pain which is what I think made the pain for the next breast even worse. But that is the worst part. So after that, he leaves the room. And at this point, I was just chatting it up with the nurse while my numbing cream kicked in. And I mean, my numbing injections, I wish it was numbing cream. My numbing injections kicked in. Um, and then she goes to the back and grabs something off the table and she wants to do what's called a pinch test. I'm laying there and she starts like pinching me and I'm like I can feel that I can feel that you know it's a test to see if you can feel things I'm like wait I can feel that she's like um she's like I know you feel me like touching you which is what I did I felt her touching me and I thought I wasn't supposed to feel anything but she's like yeah you'll feel me touching you or you'll feel you know some type of sensation so when she showed me what she was using she's like I'm using these really pointy tweezers so you would feel a sharp pain she was like i'm squeezing them with all of my might and i was like oh okay well then yeah i'm numb because i don't feel that so dr richards comes in and i'm laying down he goes ahead and starts a procedure so it wasn't painful but it was pretty uncomfortable i would say uh, because in your head you know what he's doing um prior to this the nurse asked me like she told me most patients just kind of keep their eyes closed and listen to the music. Um, but on this particular day, the music wasn't up very loud. So <laughs> I could kind of hear him grabbing the instruments and stuff like that. So if you're really freaked out about that, this might not be for you because you will be awake during the whole thing. Um, so back to the pr actual procedure. So, I mean, okay, I'll demonstrate on my hand. So it's like someone's touching my hand from my wrist all the way down to my finger. I could feel that you just made a straight line, right? So I could feel everything that he was doing. I could feel that he was making an incision down like that. And then another incision I could feel. And that part is what felt uncomfortable because you just know what's happening, you know? Then he would stitch me up and then I could kind of hear that going on and I could feel the um, nurse, you know, tapping the blood off as he was like, getting ready for another stitch and stitching it back up tight and I could feel my boot kind of jiggling when he was like you know really making sure it was it was um a skinny small incision scar so that part was an experience it was definitely experience and I definitely did not look if you're one of those type of people who likes to look go ahead live out your you know surgeon fantasies I know people like to watch surgery shows and stuff but that's just not me so i wasn't able to see what it looked like directly after surgery but i was able to see what the actual scar looked like um, once it was removed so this is what it looks like anyway some surgeons will use the blue ex um, stitches the ones that you have to remove after 10 days or two weeks and some will use the dissolvable stitches so dr richards he used the dissolvable stitches um so technically i could have taken them out myself like via a zoom call with help like that but um i really enjoyed my room out there so i decided to make the trip back and just to have them look at it just in case anything was wrong when i went back you don't i didn't see dr richards it was misty she's like the patient care coordinator and she's lovely 
So she removed the tape. Uh, she was like letting me know that I had some delayed healing. And I think that's because I went only a week later. And I think that the time frame for the stitches to heal is like 7 to 10 days. Um, but from the scar part, it was actually a lot better. There was It was pretty much almost colorless. And um, the, the stitching, I mean the actual incision appeared smaller and tighter than it was before. But I will say that my previous surgery, I didn't have any um, darkness around the incision either. It developed later on. That's why this time around, I'm planning on being very diligent about taking care of my scar. So even if this was like a pointless procedure, <laughs> I don't think it is. But even if it was, I have a brand new scar that I can start over on. And it's not settled in so I can really go hard with my routine and my regimen putting on my creams and um, you know just being on top of it like that so I'm grateful for that um, but at this point looks great and I'm just gonna have to make sure that I'm on top of things so with scar camouflage therapy um, I found this clinic online on Instagram I really love their work. I think it's amazing that you can kind of just tattoo in your scar to make it look like your skin. The thing about this is that your scar does need to be older. Like you have to wait for your scar to um, like grow up, mature, <laughs> grow up. You have to wait for your scar to grow up, become an adult. And then once they're of age, um, you can go get the skin camouflage so i think that my plan right now is to um just take care of myself way better than i did before and then at that 12 or 18 month mark if i'm feeling like i'm unsatisfied um like i'd have to be really unsatisfied because it does cost a lot of money to get that um i would probably go with that route and just be done with the whole thing so um, that's my plan for now. As far as everything else goes, um, I'm really, oop, I just dropped my phone. <laughs> as far as everything else goes, I'm really still, um, happy with my results. Um, this is a corseted top, but it's pretty, um, supportive, but I'm still happy they're still up. And, um, I know someone mentioned in the comments about, how it might be too much maintenance or all that but you know that's the risk that you take so if you want to take that risk if you want to do any of these other options to kind of perfect um perfect the work because i mean i'm pretty sure that that's like the number one thing that all surgeons are trying to figure out is how can we do procedures without any scarring um unfortunately in our time and age there's going to be scarring so it's up to you if you want to just decide to um, really be diligent on top of your scar cream regimen or if you want to do any of these other options like injections, lasers, skin camouflage, um, or scar revision, then that's up to you. And I want to keep you guys posted and I just want to let you guys know my honest experience. So that's what I'm doing here. And um, this will be one of the last two or three videos. I think I mentioned that already in this series and I'm gonna take my channel in a different direction so hopefully you guys can stay with me through that transition I'm still gonna be beauty self-improvement related things like that um, but so far thank you for all of the support oh my god thank you for all of the questions I'm happy to answer any of your questions um, it's just been it warms my heart that people are even watching or I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are interested in this but it just it just warms my heart with all the compliments and things that you've been giving me so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video